which of the following is the correct okay so here they have given the few wrong answers and few right answer so if you see derived class pointer like derived class pointer object cannot point to the base class pointer so you can see like a, if you take a simple example this is an a class and this is a b class so the pointer of this one cannot point to this one right so so if you see that's the first option right that's a right option so they are saying this is a right option so yes right you cannot point the derived class derived class object pointer to the parent class or base class which are the right options so if you see this all the options see uh, base class pointer cannot point to the derived class object this is also not right can point it can point but they are saying cannot right so this is also not the right option derived class cannot have the pointer object not the right option because it can have the pointer object here also it can have the pointer object they are giving the cannot can there is a simple difference between the two keywords right can and cannot so the first option is derived class pointer object cannot point to the base class object that's a right answer but base class object pointer can point to the derived class object next question so out of the following which one is not a member of a class is part of a class so normally class will have the data members and also member functions data members plus member functions right so if you take the virtual function is a part of class print function is not a part of class okay constant function is a part of class and static function is also part of class but they are asking not a member function right so the answer is friend is not a member of a class so why references are different from the pointers okay this question is very very important guys so why references are different from the pointers i will write a definition between the references versus pointers differences cannot be null okay cannot be null okay so they can be can be null okay so reference means just an alias name it's a variable holds address variable holds or stores address one thing differences cannot reinitialize cannot be reinitialized can be reinitialized can be reinitialized i am not writing full spelling so yeah so no extra operator required no extra operator required for dereferencing what do you mean by dereferencing dereferencing means fetching the value for the memory location okay fetching the value at that particular memory location no extra operator required for dereferencing dereferencing okay so we need a star operator for fetching the value right this is called dereferencing operator so we call this is an and symbol is nothing but address operator star operator is nothing but dereferencing operator in c++ so we need a dereferencing operator that's a star so big differences if you see the options quickly <coughs> a reference cannot be null yes it cannot be null right and no extra operator is needed for dereferencing of a reference yes right reference cannot be changed once initialized right so just now you can see uh, whenever a reference is initialized it can also not change it suppose in i equal to 20 or 10 so if you want to create a reference what's the way in same type okay ref and just assign the value this called reference suppose if you just give an empty uh, empty ref give a semicolon that's an error suppose if you want to change uh, ref to the another variable j so this also not the right option okay so this to a not the right option so if you see like fourth option is a different one it's not right uh, like relevant option to the question pointer is a static while the reference is a dynamic okay so this also not the right answer so how many right answers we have here three right answer but in the master question paper even you in the response sheet also they have given the this is the right answer reference cannot be changed once initialized but as per the theory okay as per the textbook references so at the one and also two are the right answer okay so just uh, raise an objection for this one also okay question number 182 and also 144 so option 1 is right option 2 is also right option 3 is also right okay options may be different in your response sheet okay just see the theory, like option value like option content reference cannot be null okay that's a right extra operator is not needed that's a right reference cannot be 
change like uh, cannot be changed once in slice. So, this also right option. Three options are right for this question number 182. So, if you have answered only three, you will get a marks. If you have answered one, you will also get a marks. If you have answered two also, you will get a marks. Okay. So, raise an objection for this question. Next question. So, which of the following is used by C++? So, very direct question. C++ is all, always bottom to top approach. Next question. Which concept is used to implement the late binding? So, late binding is nothing but runtime polymorphism. Just now we discussed. So, at the time of runtime, objects methods will be uh, like determined by the compiler. So, the one way we can achieve in the C++ is virtual functions. So, we will use a keyword called virtual before the methods. Before a method name, we use a keyword called virtual. So, that is called virtual function. With the help of virtual functions, we can implement the late binding. Next question. Which of the following is not a possible state of a pointer? Normally, pointers will have three states, right? A, B, C. A, B, C. Okay. Not a possible state, they are asking. Okay. So, if you take the first three options, there are all the possible states of a pointer. Okay. They are asking not a possible state, right? Just observe not operator, like not in the question. Very, very confusing. So, the fourth option, like option point to type is not a possible state. Point to type. So, this is not the right option. So, they ask the what is the following output for the code. So, we have an integer declaration. So, we have a cat declaration, no syntax error. They are printing the quotations B and they are printing A. So, what do you mean by quotations B? So, it is a just a string line, it will print as it is. Okay, if you are printing A, it will print uh, 23, right? So, yeah, so in the same line. So, they are not using the println, they are not using the println, they are using the print. So, it will print in the same line. So, throws an exception, not okay so 23 by so the pattern no see so we have an b and 23 is the right answer right so don't get confused they are printing just a b not the variable of b if you want to print the variable of b no quotations are required so they are printing the quotations b means they are printing the one simple string so the answer is b and the value of a is 23 very easy question so if you see uh, what is the output for the following question again code snippet they are expecting the output so, if you see they have given the byte b or byte x equal to 127, they are doing the post, so this is called post increment operator, post increment operator. So, so if you take the byte range, so byte is an 8 byte, uh, 8 bits, right? So, 8 bits or 1 byte. So, what is the range of the byte? If you know the range of the byte, you can able to answer this question. The range of the byte is minus 128 to 127 positive 127 right the formula is very simple guys minus 2 power n minus 1 2 plus 2 power n minus 1 and whole minus 1 so that's a formula for any range of a data type okay so here so the value of x is 127 so byte can maximum store the 127 right so it cannot store greater than 127 if you're getting confused like here option error is not given okay so that is eliminated from the option they are doing the post increment so if you do the post increment on 127 plus plus so what happens it has to upgrade to the 128 but 128 cannot be fit into the byte so byte will follow the chain process so chain process so when you increment this value it will come to this one right so now it will be minus 128 on the minus 128 again you are doing the plus plus so it will be minus 127 so very very easy question okay if you already think we uh, we got the same question in the last year also and also we have discussed the same question in the grand test also so byte will follow the chaining process the value of the x will be minus 127 not the positive it will be minus 127 okay it's very simple just remember byte will follow the chaining process after reaching the maximum value again it will start from the starting negative value okay yeah when array is passed to a method what does a method receives okay in java like everything is a pass by value uh, we think okay so normal primitive data types are passed by value primitive data types are passed by value okay pass by value but arrays are always passed by reference they will pass the reference so if you take the so yes reference of an array is passed very direct question okay not the copy not the length not the null value so, you can simply delete the like very funny option. See, length will be not passed, right? Null also will not be passed. So, we will get confused with the only first option and third option. 
So which one is the right option? Third is the best option, right? You can see a reference of an array is passed to the method in Java. So which is a keyboard that makes a variable belongs to the class rather than being defined for each instance of a class, right? So they are asking which variable will belong to the class level, not object level. So instance variables will be object level. We know this concept. Instance variables will be object level, object level, right? And static variables will be class level. So we declared one copy. This is one copy for one object. One for one object. One copy for one object. This is one copy for all objects. Or one class, you can take it as one copy for all objects. Static variables means class level. Okay, so this type of information is very very important. So right answer. So we need a static keyword for the variables if they want to belong to the class, not to the objects. Next question. What is the return type of a constructor in a class? So constructors doesn't have any return type, right? They will have access modifiers. Public will be allowed. Public, suppose student is a class. So what is a constructor? Constructor is something but same name as a class name. Student and if you have a, any parameters, you can take the parameters. So there is no return type. Return type is not needed. So no return type is required. Okay, not int, not void, not string. You may get, get confused with the void and the not option, but void is also not required. So no return type is required because from the constructor we don't return anything. Constructors are mainly for installation of your object variables. Next question. A throw statement invokes an exception. Okay, we know the five keywords like uh, try, catch, okay, and we have a finally, okay and throw throws don't get confused with the throws throws is in the method signature they use in the method signature throw means whenever you want to throw the forcefully any exception forcefully means explicitly explicit means forcefully manually so the answer is this one so whenever you want to store a uh, exception throw the exception forcefully so we use this one okay so simple example throw throw new io exception so this is a way of throwing the exception. Throw is important, not throws. Explicitly is the right answer. So I think again we got the three coding questions. I mean through three coding snippets in this uh, in this year from the Java class parent. So we have a uh, public void uh, display one method and public class extends parent. Okay, so this is inheritance inheritance concept. Yeah, public void display. Okay, so here if you see. Uh, in the parent class method, in the parent class, the method is public and the final. Okay, public is fine, access modifier public is there. But here we have a final is there. If the method is final, we cannot override, right? So we cannot override, cannot override. So same method name is in parent and child. This is called method overriding. Method overriding. But so it is not achievable because final keyword is there in the parent method if the any method is final access modifier we cannot override if it is a variable it's a final constant if the class is final cannot be inherited if the method is final we cannot achieve the in i mean method override that method cannot be override in the subclass or child class so you will get a simple error called compile time error cd compile time error okay so when you try to create like when you are writing the code also in the edit or like editors or ids you get a simple error. The method is final in the parent, cannot be overridden in the chain. That's a simple error. So see, compile the error. CD. Next question. Which of the following is true about interfaces in Java? Okay. So interfaces with the help of interfaces, we can achieve the abstraction. We know this concept. Okay. Interface can have the following type of members: public, static, final fields. Okay, and uh, default static methods with the bodies. Is that the right option, right? So normally interfaces will have the public, static, final variables. Okay, this is one thing. So the first point, they will have the public, abstract, abstract methods. Okay, methods. This is up to Java 8. Up to Java 8. Okay. Already we discussed the same example, uh, example in the like uh, like gunshot bits. So 
and the third point so it can have the static and default methods also means with the body static means they will have a body default also will have a body this is supported from the java 9 this is supported from the java 9 up to java 8 only abstract methods and public static final constant but from a java 9 it can have the static methods and also default methods they will have the body they will have the body so the option is so this is the right option have a note next question so I think they have been simple again. I think this is a fourth uh, course snippet. This is a fourth course snippet. I'm seeing. Yeah. Let me read the question. For class name is for loop, public static void main, and they have given a simple for loop code, and they are printing hello and they are breaking. So if you see normal syntax of the for loop. First of all, whenever they give the course snippet, always see the syntax of the code. Okay. So no semicolons are missing. No brackets are missing. Class name is correct. Keywords are correct. Public static void main is also correct. String ox is also correct. For loop code. So if you see the for loop code for this is an initialization int i equal to 0. So this should be condition like here should be condition. There should be a condition. But here they have again initialized i equal to like 0. 0 is not a condition, right? 0 is not a condition, it's an integer, right? It's an integer. But it will expect Boolean value. It will expect Boolean value. Boolean value. Always in the condition always in the condition it should be boolean value boolean true or boolean false boolean true or boolean false boolean value but don't think zero is a zero is a false and one is a true okay this is not in java this is not in java so zero means integer one means integer true means false true false are booleans only okay so in c++ is it right in c++ it's right in cpp okay it's right in c c c language also C language also, but in Java, 0 and 1 are not treated as true and false. Okay, so these are the Boolean values, these are what we call these are primitive data types, integer primitive data types. So the answer is here we get the error call. So it is integer, but it should get it should have the Boolean condition. Boolean condition is always required in the condition statement. So we will get a simple error runtime or compile time exception. Sorry, so very simple, direct question. Okay, don't get confused with the concepts of C++, C with the Java. Okay, because uh, like language to language, different principles will be there. Okay, in C++, we can uh, like treat one as a true, zero as a false. But in Java, it's a different. Okay, if you apply the same knowledge of C++ here in Java, you will treat this one is the right option. You will print hello, and that's the right answer. Okay, most of the people will also like selected the have selected the hello because the condition is true. It will just print hello, and it will break the loop. Code is right. They will do the same thing. Okay, but as per Java, it is not the right answer. Answer is compile time error. Always in the condition should be the Boolean condition. Even in the if condition should be Boolean. Even in the switch case also should be Boolean. Even in the for loops also, while loops also, condition should be always Boolean data type, not other data types. Next question. So I think this is the last question. Yeah. So if you see the concept of threads in Java used for enabling the entire environment to so why we need the threads? Threads means multi-threading, right? So multiple execution. So we need we need to achieve the multiple parallel programming. So that is nothing but asynchronous. Synchronous means serial. Serial. So asynchronous means random. So even suppose uh, one thread is waiting. T1 is waiting for IO operation. Uh, T2 wants to enter into CPU. So this thread can be on hold and this thread can be executed. Right? So this is called asynchronous. Asynchronous. The T2 need not to be wait for IO operation to be completed by T1, right? So, like whenever, like this one is waiting, you can give the CPU to the T2. T2 will be completed again. CPU will be given to the T1. This is called asynchronous processing. So, the right option is asynchronous is the right option. So, in the in the asynchronous, we can utilize the CPU. Maximum CPU utilization, maximum CPU utilization will be happen. Okay. So, if you see the weightage. In HTML, we allows to present document in a multiple views. Okay, it's very simple. So whenever you want to write a document in a multiple frames, okay, multiple windows. So we use the frames concept. Okay, so this is related to the table, not the right option. So whenever you want to represent the data in a tabular format, okay, like rows and columns. So we use the table tag. Okay, this all are related to the table. Three options. So the only one is a frames is a whenever you want to represent the document in the multiple views. Next option. So again the question from HTML, so if you see 
like we have a tag called li tag so we can call this as a list tag okay so whenever you write any uh, data inside this uh, opening and closing tag so they will give the bullet points like this one two three like this so very direct questions so bulleted text on the separated lines next question so i think this question is from php so if you have a little knowledge on php this is a very uh, basic question very basic question so one of the constants start with the underscore and ends with the underscore normally in the php we have a magic magic constants so we can call the magic constants as a special constants or special things in the php magic constants normally starts with the underscore suppose you want to name any constant student okay it will start with the underscore capital letter underscore and ends with the underscore also ends with the underscore this is called magic constant starts with the underscore ends with the underscore so these are called magic constants and you can also ask another way of asking the same question they can ask the magic constants or predefined constants in php we can call them as predefined constants yeah predefined constants note it down yeah another question on javascript so so which one of the following is not a feature of javascript so if you take the javascript it's a one of the programming language we can call it as a client side language client side scripting language okay scripting language and if you see the options javascript is light weighted and cross cross platform what do you mean by cross platform means different platforms like we have an android right? it can support on android it can support on ios it can support on the different operating systems next is javascript can handle the date and time and manipulation javascript can perform form validation compiler is needed in the javascript so if you see they are asking not a feature okay don't get confused with this uh, keyword they are asking which one is a not a feature they are not asking which one is is a feature so if you see the all the three options first one is a feature it's a light weighted compared to all the languages javascript is very light weighted and it's a it can handle the date and time manipulation that's also feature it can perform the fun, uh, form validation means client side validations so and also if you see java compiler is needed for the javascript so, so this is wrong okay for javascript we don't need a compiler no need of compiler for the javascript we can execute the javascript in the simple browsers google browser or firefox browser no need of compiler for javascript compiler is not needed for the javascript okay normally we require the compiler for c c++ java but for javascript compiler is not needed so the option is this is the right option compiler is not a this is not a feature right compiler is needed is a in in the javascript this is not a feature you can select the fourth option is the right option and the last question again the question on javascript so that is simple code like normally you write the javascript in the script tag write the in the script tag in opening tag in closing tag so this is a script tag yeah so they have given the var a equal to so this is a way of declaration of the variables in javascript var means a keyword var a equal to engineering so they have given engineering so they are doing some uh, operation a dot substring they are giving the index from 3 to 6 then doing the output statement this is called document write means it's a print just like a print in c++ so indexing concept substring if you know the substring in c c++ also you can just answer this question okay so third index to sixth index which is the third index here e is a zero index 1 2 and 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so if you take the third index value so it's starting with the i right and the fourth third third to sixth right so i n e so i n e and the sixth is also e right so but don't select this answer okay so third to sixth means sixth is not inclusive it's a exclusive exclusive means it will only go up to six minus one so we have to take only third index fourth index and fifth index so the right option is i and e i and e so if you see so this is the right option so both we have our options you can see we have an option with the i double n e and also we have an option with the i n e so don't consider the last index always this is exclusive i hope you know the meaning of exclusive inclusive exclusive means it's not included okay six minus one 